My name is Philippa Kibugu Dikui. I'm a 21 year breast cancer survivor. The reason I started this uh, organization is first in the memory of my sister who died of breast cancer in 1986 and my survival in 1994. When I survived, a question came to me. Would my sister be alive if she lived in the US? And without being able to answer that, I asked myself, should where somebody live determine whether she lives or dies? And so started Philippa's journey to help the women of East Africa. But her journey was not one of taking the road less traveled, but rather a journey where there was no road at all. When I first went to, to Rwanda, breast cancer was not known. Nobody knew about breast cancer. Although I met 27 women whose breasts, in their own words, had been cut off, not by specialized doctors, but ordinary doctors, because that's the only way, that's the only treatment available in the country. There was no single oncologist. I did a small survey of 10 doctors to see whether I can get help from the doctors. I asked them, how many of you got tra uh, uh, training or have heard of breast cancer? Only two of the 10 doctors had heard of breast cancer. Wait, only two have heard of the breast cancer? He, yes, they had never heard of that subject. If that wasn't bad enough, she learned that women of East Africa were being misled about the very subject of breast cancer. Oh, you talk about this, what's that? They told me uh, breast cancer doesn't uh, uh, belong to Africans, it's for white people. Uh, they say that, uh, I, I try to explain, they said, no, we don't talk about it. You can't talk about it. If, if you talk about it, it's going to be contagious. People will shun you. It was incredible. So how do you educate people who regard this issue as taboo and live in an area where the medical community is so far behind the rest of the modern world? It starts with awareness. Awareness is not just awareness as we know it here. It's sensitizing people because this is taboo. You don't talk about something that is shunned and that is feared because there's so much stigma about it. You have to get people to trust what you're saying. The only saving grace was I could talk about my sister and I could death and I could talk about myself as a survivor. I had double mastectomy, I had chemotherapy, I had reconstruction, and I had support during all that. Using the lessons learned in the US, I said I would start a support group with the survivors. And that's exactly what she did. That was then, this is now. Today, Philippa's office is filled with newspaper clippings, pictures, items, and awards showing the impact her organization has had. Breast Cancer Initiative East Africa is truly making a difference. They are saving lives. Who are we? We are educators, encouragers, campaigners, fundraisers, advocates, and believers. She's come a long way. In 2007, she funded her first trip to Africa by selling her clothes at a silent auction in her home. Today, the organization provides training to their peer leaders in Africa so they can help spread the knowledge and help more women survive. They're always thinking of creative ways to raise funds and awareness. They host dinners at locations in the U.S. and in Africa where people enjoy a delicious meal, share stories, and learn more about what they can do to help this wonderful cause. Funds are generated in multiple ways, including selling shirts, sandals, books, and more. And they organize events such as the Ulinzi Walk. One of the main events, we call it our signature event, is the walk. 
and we call it Ulenzi. Ulenzi means God protect in Swahili. So when we do it, it's a major event. That's when we reach out to everybody. Everybody comes to have fun, to lean on each other, to celebrate the survivors and encourage those going through and remember those who died because they are the catalyst for doing all this. The one in Rwanda is not a fundraiser, it's more of an education and awareness. It starts with walking and having fun and singing and dancing and it ends with a public forum with uh, stakeholders, the policymakers, the doctors, survivors, giving ideas and answering, answering questions. And we, on top of that, we do have screening, and it's not the usual screening that you have with mammograms. We do clinical breast exams done by doctors and nurses. And their latest innovation is utilizing the smartphone to reach thousands. The most exciting and innovative idea that I've ever have to, to come up with was something I call fighting breast cancer one smartphone per village. Almost everybody has a smartphone and I said why not leverage something that's already there that somebody that's popular and get the message to the people. Put all the information you have in an app form, load it on the smartphone, train a villager Make sure she's doing the right thing and then deploy her in her own village with where she's known and trusted. Through its mobile application, they will now have the ability to educate women about breast cancer in over 250 villages in Rwanda. With an average of 800 people per village, that means with just 250 smartphones, they can reach 200,000 people and they will be able to expand their education footprints in Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania as well. I want to welcome you on this journey. Come join us, support us. You can volunteer, you can go to Rwanda with me, you can give, you can buy, you can create, you can hold your own fundraiser, you can join the walk, you can come to the dinner, the choice is yours. Remember, success is adding importance to yourself. Significance is adding value to another life. Which one are you? Early detection is the best protection. Let's spread the word.